All February, CBC News has been marking Black History Month. Today, we're featuring the story of Jacob Callender Prasad. He's a 22-year-old Vancouver man who tried to get a few dozen people to protest against anti-black racism. Well, three and a half thousand turned up. Asha Tomlinson has his story. There's hope for people my age that we don't have to be another statistic. We can rise above that. Hope keeps us going. Hope helps us accomplish the goals that we need to make in life. No matter what culture you're from, hope is the aspiration in life that keeps you alive. My name is Jacob Calendar Prasad, born and raised in Vancouver, British Columbia, and I'm an activist for um, black culture in Canada. Jacob has quickly emerged as a young leader in the anti-black racism movement in BC. He started speaking out after being racially profiled multiple times. Can you tell me about your experiences with police? Back in 2017, a few days before Christmas, I was getting groceries for my mom from the corner store when I was taken down by undercover police. At that time, they did not make themselves clear to me that they're undercover police. I instantly knew to put my hands up, but part of me was thinking, should I run? If I ran, who knew what would have happened? But I didn't. They pinned me down to the ground. Several officers then came out. They had a gun to my uh, back. They were checking me, had a knee on my back as well. At the very end, they told me they suspected me for two attempts of murder. Then they said I was the wrong person and this was all mistaken identity. Burnaby RCMP apologized with a $25 gift card and a tour of their detachment. And that wasn't the first time he'd been profiled. The second time was Metrotown, where I was believed to have stolen clothes. The Burnaby RCMP once again detained me at Metrotown for an hour. Once my mom spoke to them and I showed my receipts, they then let me go. Another time was in North Vancouver. I had a man be very racist to me, screaming the N-word at me. He decided to call the police on me, saying I was being violent, which I was not. The police then came and basically told us we were not welcomed in the area and that we were to leave the area immediately and find a new place to go. Even talking about it right now, it's still very hard because when I see an officer, I don't feel the same welcomeness that I used to feel being younger. Whenever we walk by officers, I take my hands out of my pockets because I'm not sure what they're gonna think. What was it like for you to watch the video of George Floyd's killing? When I saw that video, I cried, my heart broke. When I was arrested, I had a knee on my back with a gun to my back as well while being searched. There could have been a knee on my neck. There could have been a knee on how many other black people's necks. It definitely does trigger a lot of emotions. I was outraged. I was hurt, sad, mad, didn't know what to feel at the time. And I wanted to do something. I wanted to change something. So Jacob organized his first demonstration last May in Vancouver. He only expected dozens to join him. Instead, thousands showed up. What was that like? Amazing and heartwarming. There was a moment when we did a moment of silence for the fallen at the art gallery and everyone went silent and put their fist up. And you watched from the front to the back as everyone put their fist up together. You had every culture that you could think of standing there together, supporting one major issue, and that was racism. I was shocked. I was speechless. There's like, there's no feeling in the world to describe seeing all these people. You're 22. You have a, a long career and life ahead of you. What is inspiring you to move forward? My family, honestly. They're probably the most supportive people in my life. My grandmother, the amount of work she's done for our community in this city is so great. And she makes me want to be a better person. She makes me want to educate more people about what's going on in our community. Before I did this interview, I was just speaking to her about this. And I can hear the enthusiasm in her voice, the proudness in her voice. And to hear that in her voice makes me so uplifted and so happy because I look up to my grandmother. and. I don't know what I'd do if she wasn't here, and she gives me the most motivation in my life to do the work that I'm doing now.
Asha Tomlinson joins us now to discuss her profile on Jacob. Asha, he's so young and, and has experienced yeah. a lot uh, in his 22 years, but he's also very inspiring. Um, what, does he, can you tell us more about what more he has planned, what he's hoping to do next? Yeah, uh, he's so hopeful, right? You hear him off the top talking about that hope. He mm -hmm. has many hopes and dreams, in fact, and he plans to go to university next year. He wants to study urban planning, business and marketing. And then from there, the sky's the limit for this kid, right? He hopes to start his own nonprofit organization. He says creating anti-racism programs in his community. If that's not enough of a goal, Janella, he also tells me he wants to get into politics, wow. uh, start off as a city councilor and then mayor of Vancouver. Uh, so he's giving himself a 10 year timeline. That's a lot of time to reach those milestones. And I can tell you, I'm sure we'll be hearing and talking a lot more about Jacob Calendar Prasad in the future. Yeah, big ambitions, but I don't doubt that he will achieve them. And it sounds like his grandmother was a big inspiration. What more do we know about her? You can definitely hear it, right? And, and you just see where he gets his passion from, his drive, his determination. His grandmother is Nalda Callender. She's a longtime advocate for black rights in Canada and in BC. She's the executive director of the National Congress of Black Women Foundation. She's been named as one of 100 accomplished black women in Canada. She was on the list back in 2016. So that just gives you an idea of you know, what he's looking at as a role model. Mm. And his grandmother was the one to stand beside him when he went public about his wrongful arrest at just 17 years old. So it is a strong support system that he has. He tells us it takes a village, as they say, Janella. And it really is, you know, he points to his grandmother, his mother, his aunt uh, for that direction and drive. And also it, it strongly influences and shapes who he is. And, and just the fact that, it, you know, he has this continued courage to stand up for what he believes in, no matter what. That's amazing. CBC's Asha Tomlinson, always good to see you. Thanks for being with us. You too. Take care. And for more stories like this, you can visit our website, cbc.ca slash beingblackincanada, or check us out on Instagram, cbcbeingblackincanada.